So either way, yeah. Hello, my name's Elizabeth, but you can call me Liz. And in today's video, I'm basically gonna be talking about my experience with Epic and just my general experience of teaching English in Korea. So if you wanna see that, keep on watching. But first, let's get it. <laughs> Hey, so like I said, today's video is going to be about my experience with the EPIC program and just my general experience of teaching English in Korea because I did say I was going to make a video and this is it. So, I even wrote like little sticky notes. That way I could remember what I was going to say. So recently in February, I just came back from Korea. I was living there for two years. I lived in the city of Gyeongju. This map. I lived in the city of Gyeongju for two years and I taught my first year at an all boys middle school and then my second year at that same middle school and then more of a rural, rural elementary school. So yeah, um, so two years ago, I basically applied for the EPIC program and at that time I had already my TEFL. It is very, 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 very important. If you want to be in like a foreign English teacher, an ESL teacher, anywhere, not just in Korea, but like just anywhere in general, I really recommend that you get a TEFL certificate. So mine was from, I believe, mytifu.com. I think it, you have to have between 120 to maybe 140, 160, this number right here, um, hours of like, just like relearning the grammar rules and how to handle a class full of students, usually more elementary, middle, and high school age, but you know, you can also do a, a TEFL for business language, English, business English language, um, and more for college level. But it's very, 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 very important. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you get a TEFL. I, because I was like, I knew that I needed to get a TEFL. I got a TEFL and after my TEFL, um, I got in contact with a coordinator and she told me like, oh, like what areas were you thinking of going? Like Japan, China, Korea, like where were you thinking of going? And I told her like, my top three were either Japan, China, or Korea. So then she put me in contact with the EPIC coordinators and the EPIC program is the English program in Korea. And it's like one of the more legit, well-known programs that you can go through. But I feel like the EPIC program is definitely more cutthroat in a way because for that one, you definitely need a BA certificate. It doesn't matter where. It is highly encouraged that you have a teaching certificate, like a teaching BA or some similar to that. But like, they don't really care about that except that if it's a BA. As long as you have finished university. And I feel like there are other programs like the TEFL. Well, not the TEFL. Um, there's a talk program. And if you're in high school, there's also many like smaller programs like learning Korean learning language where you can go in Korea and like experience the culture and learn the language more. I feel like there's more for that for like high school st students or you know if you're in university and you want to go to Korea you can definitely just um study abroad there you know spend a semester while I was in university I did spend a semester in Korea that's why I was like oh let me go teach in Korea except um in university I believe it was Jochiwon Yes, if I remember correctly. It was in Jochiwon and this time I went to Gyeongju. I think Jochiwon is closer to um, Daejeon. There we go. Jochiwon is closer to De Daejeon and Gyeongju is more like down here. Like on the Korean map. Highly, highly recommend a TIFO. And after I got in contact with the EPIC coordinator, he basically told me like, okay, so these are all the papers we need from you. Ranging from like getting like making sure you're not like an ex-convict, making sure, you know, you have that university degree, getting recommendations from like either teachers or um, just like recommendations from your work and being stuff like that. And afterwards, you basically fill out, you know, your, um, your application. There we go. What the fuck? 
you basically fill out your application and you tell them your top three countries. So again, I chose Japan, Korea, and China. And for Japan, they told me it was more, you needed an actual BA in actual teaching. So you needed to have been able to taught, at least from what they told me. I'm sure there's like other programs in Japan, just similar like in Korea. And China was like, oh, well, uh, so, you know, they made me choose between China and Korea. And I was like, okay, Korea. So then afterwards, they told me, so what specific, like, city do you want to go to? And I chose um, Seoul, Daegu, and Busan. And then after that, you basically go through all that. And then you they prep you for an interview. And you have an interview with more of a Korean person and they interview you and they kind of like get a feel for like a your experience if you've had any volunteer experience uh what was your like you know BA in mine is anthropology where my anthro people at what's up what's good what's poppin <laughs> um but yeah because it was in anthropology I was like able to finesse be like oh you know culture learning about culture we gotta go to Korea to learn about that culture you know and like learning about the culture in a middle school versus different versus girl all girls to all boys and you know elementary and like oh it's different from America yada yada so I was able to finish my way with that um and then after the interview they tell you like yes or no and I was one of the lucky ones that they told me yes so afterwards they you basically kind of like wait a little while while the Korean people basically the schools pick you so whatever school in Korea in that general area feels like they need an English teacher, they, I feel like they probably like give them the kind of like your application, your resume, your like your photo and be like, oh, this is a person we want or this like based on this, like their volunteer experience or their like teaching experience, this is a person we want. So basically after that, you basically are like, yep, we have found a school, we have found a city for you to live in, pack your bags, you're ready to go. And I feel like if there's anything that I recommend for you to take is um, for girls, if you are a girl, take um, tampons, if you're more of a tampon girl than a pad girl. They definitely sell pads in Korea because I bought some from Korea all the way to America. Pads are expensive. Okay. And tampons, like, they're not really that accessible, at least in smaller cities. I feel like if you go to Seoul or even Busan, you will find some. But, like, if you don't live in those areas, it might be a bit harder and a bit more expensive to be able to buy those. Um, they do sell deodorant. I don't know why a lot of people like to say, like, oh, no, they don't sell deodorant. They do sell deodorant. It is kind of expensive, but, uh, me. Um... I think if you are more of a curvier shaped girl, you know, you got them boobs, them ass, them thighs, you know, um, maybe there's definitely clothes for you like H&M and Forever 21, not Forever 21, H&M, Zara, like clothes like that. So they definitely do have like larger sizes, but I think if you're like curvier, it might be a bit harder to find um, clothes as well as if you are above and girls. If you want to find cute shoes, if you are above an 8.5, an 8.5, bring your own shoes. I was lucky enough because uh, my foot is right on the verge, is an 8. It's a 250 in Korea, right on the verge. That's where all the girl shoes stop. I don't know why. Korean people have small shoes, small feet. Um, maybe, I think maybe if you like big towels, bring a big towel. They sell smaller towels. I don't know, it's up to you. Um, but yeah. So basically, you get all that, you fly to Korea, the, at least for me, I don't know about right now with, you know, the panorama going on, um, but you basically have like an interview, like not an interview, an orientation after you get to Korea, like the EPIC program picks you up, your coordinator, they all pick you up and they all like from everywhere, it doesn't matter where you are going to Korea, you all go to the same orientation. And once you're in that orientation, they tell you like, oh, kind of like tips and tricks on how to, you know, be able to discipline students or how to be able to live in Korea or yada, 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 all that. And like afterward, after like maybe a day or two, they separate you into your different like cities and you just learn and yeah. And at the end of that whole orientation, you got like a taste of Korean culture, Korean food, like what you should do, shouldn't do. 
stuff like that. And after that whole orientation, you basically, you get to know, finally, after months and months of like doing all this, you get to know where you're going, what city you're going, how many schools you're getting, what, who are you teaching? Why are you, know, you're just kidding. But stuff like that. And for me, I was one of the, I don't know if you would say lucky or unlucky. I don't know, up to you. Um, people that only got one school. I know one of my friends got three schools. Her first year, she had to go to high school, middle school, and elementary school. My other friend got two elementary schools. And my other friend got one elementary school. So I think it, like, depends. I don't know, I guess. It depends on, basically, I think, maybe on your experience and what you did in college or university. But yeah. And then you get packed all into a bus with your luggage after that you meet your co-teacher and this is the person that will basically not do everything for you but technically do everything for you they help you kind of like get a feel for the school if you have any questions or any concerns you go to them for the most part um they're the ones you work with you know if you co-teach you co-teach with them um yeah they're the ones who basically take you, like they meet you after, you know, you get all packed up and they meet you after they tell you like, you are going to this city or this and that. You meet them and they take you to your apartment, they take you to the school. For my, for me personally, like I never, like I have never heard of Gyeongju before, ever in my lifetime. But because I said Daegu, usually I think the Epic program likes to... They try to accommodate where you want to go, but it also depends on like the schools and like because Korea is more of like wanting to be more, uh, I don't want to say develop, but wanting to be able to have the opportunity to be able to speak English to all the areas and not just like the main, main cities. So they definitely do kind of like these smaller towns. They want to have more foreign people living there just because it's like oh more of a chance more of an opportunity for the kids to learn english which is what i why a lot of the a lot of teachers get put into like smaller cities rather than being in seoul and busan because they have like a lot of they have a lot of fucking foreigners like let's get real so i had never heard of gyeongju um I do remember that my co-teacher, when she saw me, she was like, you look like a high schooler. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is a good or a bad thing. And then like at that point, like in my orientation, it was like, you get to work at a middle school. Usually, usually for the EPIC program, a lot of the teachers about, I want to say 70, 80% you teach at an elementary school because that's where all the students start learning English. And here I was thinking I was going to teach in elementary school. I don't know why because my volunteer experience has been with middle schoolers while I was in studying abroad in Korea. I volunteered at a middle school in Jochiwon. <laughs> and while I was here, I volunteered both in the middle school and the high school. So I don't know why I thought I was going to get elementary school. Don't ask me why. But because, you know, they said, oh, 70 to 80% of you will get elementary schools. I was like, okay. So I took all the elementary schools and how to, like, be able to control them and how to motivate them to learn English. So I was like, oh, okay. But not just, like, any middle school, an all-boys middle school. And I was like, <laughs> and then my co-teacher, she was like, you look like a high schooler. And I'm like, oh, is that a good or bad thing? <laughs> um, but yeah. You go to your area, you go to your city, and BAM! You're an English teacher in South Korea. <laughs> I make it sound so easy, but it takes about... Uh, I feel like it could, could take between three months to five months. They usually try to get you either in the spring or the fall. So depending on where you apply, it's how fast and how lucky you are. Um, but yeah. And again, for the EPIC program, they mostly... I think for the most part, 100% for the most part, they deal with um, the public Korean school system. Korea, however, is a unique country because of the whole hagwons. What the fuck is this? Because of the whole hagwons. So if you don't want to work uh, basically like from 8.30 to 4.30, 30 like the whole school day, you have the opportunity to work in a hagwon, which is after school program and or academy they call it both i don't know which one you would like to use but it's basically where the students go f 
from 8.30 to 4.30 to school. They do that Monday through Friday. But then sometimes, depending on what the parents, I think, are able to afford or like what the student wants to be able to learn, um, they basically go to these after school programs, after school academies. It's called Hagwon in Korea. And they go either two to two t out of the five days or they go three or four or five. They go on Saturday all day. I'm like, dedication. I could never. We could never in America. But dedication in Korea. So you basically, you also have the opportunity to teach in a hagwon. But for hagwons, I heard it's a bit more iffy, a bit more tricky. Because, like, it is an after-school program. It isn't more, you don't get, like, the national holidays that the public schools get. Um... And some of them can be really, like, iffy, from what I heard. But you do get paid more. So, I don't know. It's up to you. I don't really know much about Hagwans except, like, my students didn't like it. <laughs> That's all I know. Some students liked it, but because they have to go from 8.30 to 4.30 to school, and then right after they go to Hagwan until 8, and they, they do their homework until 10, and they... And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> when do you sleep? They don't. They, I don't know much about hagwans, but uh, yeah. You, if you don't want to teach in a public school setting like the EPIC program does, you definitely, in Korea, you definitely have the chance to teach in a hagwan. But just be careful because like some of them are a bit shady. <laughs> So basically, that's my like little ooh. I definitely, 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 definitely recommend a TIFL. Like, I don't care where you're going. I don't care if you're going for Seoul, for Busan, for Gyeongju, for Daegu. I don't care. Get that TIFL, boo. Like, I don't care if you're going to Korea, if you're going to Japan. They, like, companies might say like, oh, no, you don't need a TIFL. And then halfway through, they'll be like, so where that TIFL at? Get your TIFL. TIFL. I think it's, they have the TIFL and they have another, like, um, another one. This one right here. Um, but yeah, get it. It will help you. So now, let's transition to little apps that I recommend that you use. So these were a lifesaver in Korea. I definitely recommend. First of all, cacao. Like, that's the number one messaging app my teachers have it the students have it the friends have it cacao cacao kata, kata, kata. Kata. you have the option between kato map and neighbor map personally personally obviously there's other maps but personally personally i love neighbor map more than cacao map just because i feel like neighbor map is easier to navigate there's an app for it um i don't know i feel like it's more reliable i like neighbor map more some people do like cacao map more than neighbor up to you but i prefer neighbor map um papago <laughs> papago is was my best friend like papago papago it's basically the google translate of korea that's it Papago. Um, obviously, if you live like in a bigger city like Seoul or Daegu, they have different apps for like the train. No, the subway. Subway or train? Subway, right? But they have for that. I usually used Naver Map because I lived in Gyeongju. There wasn't really a subway system. They do have bus system though, which the intercity bus system and the city bus system. Wow. Korea knows their infrastructure, boo-boo. Like, the one for the city, amazing. I use neighbor map to go anywhere because I would put to and from and it would tell me, oh, take bus number 50, take bus number 70, take bus number 290, blah, 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 to get all over Gyeongju. Amazing. Now, the intercity bus is basically, it's like the Greyhound. Like buses like that, which don't work in America because America is way too big and you would be traveling way too long. But in Korea, because it's like a smaller country than America, you take that intercity bus from all the way from Gyeongju to Daegu, it takes you one hour. From Gyeongju to Busan, it takes you one and a half hours. If you're going from Gyeongju to Seoul, it does take you about three or four hours. But you also have the option of taking the KTX. 
Not to be confused with the bullet train because or else the Korean people would be mad at you. <laughs> the KTX is basically the fast moving train. They also have the regular train but I heard that the regular train is more sound unless you want to see the scenery but it takes a long long time. So I recommend the KTX and uh, I can go from Gyeongju to Seoul two and a half hours from Shin Gyeongju to Seoul station one and a half two hours amazing like korea if anything has oh, you know what i miss internet in korea oh my god the internet in korea is amazing the whole like transportation system amazing internet amazing food amazing so yeah um i think that's it if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments and i will try my best to answer them i don't have like any crazy stories like uh -huh. i do have a crazy story if you want to see that I already made a video about <laughs> But, um, yeah. I think it had to do with me looking a bit oriental <laughs> to begin with. So I don't have any, like, ooh, Korean people were rude to me. Ooh, no, yada, yada. If anything, Korean people used to talk to me in Korean. And I'd be like, yeah, de algo simida, de uh huh. They always thought I was Korean American. I always got that ilbun or jongwo. That I was from Japan or China. Or some people actually they were like, Oh, she's Filipina. I should from Vietnam. <laughs> Wrong. I'm from America. And then I would tell them I'm from America. And they were like, Really? It still amazes me. Because um, for the most part, a lot of the older generation, when they think of an American, they think of like that blonde hair, blue eyes, like, oh, Kelly girl accent who? But I feel like the more... People go not just from America, but from Euro from Britain, Europe, Ireland, Scotland, um, South Africa, and all these Australia, um, New Zealand, all these other English speaking countries. I feel like that whole stereotype will hopefully change in the future because I still don't like the stereotype of America that Americans have, especially American girls. Because Korean boys think you will think you are easy because some American girl fucked it up for all of us. But you know, I digress. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, question. I feel like I always ask, have you ever heard of the city Gyeongju? I think Gyeongju is really pretty and I definitely recommend you visit it. I think it's very historical and I think it's a great selfie place. <laughs> I'd recommend going to Woljongyo. Woljongyo, maybe? <laughs> the bridge and Samsung day at night because I think those views are really pretty, especially Woljongyo Bridge. It's really pretty at night because it lights up and Samsung day changes colors from blue, pink. It's really pretty, especially around the area of Changsong day, especially right now because it's all about like they all have like flowery paths. Um, during I don't know, I think it will be, yeah, I think the probably the cherry blossoms are dead <laughs> or dying, but um. By Chungkyodong, that little area between, um, after you cross the bridge, before you get into the town of, um, the district of Chungkyodong, you have, like, this really pretty, um, cherry blossom trail, where in the years past, they would do the cherry blossom festival, so I would definitely recommend you go there once the panorama is over. Um, I think you should definitely visit Gyeongju, it's really pretty, I really, like, loved it. When I go back, just so I could take pictures. <laughs> but I want the panorama to be over. Um, question. Would you ever become an English teacher elsewhere? Indoor, an English teacher at a old boys middle school. I think definitely all boys middle school get a terrible rep i think middle schools in korea get a terrible rep because there was this rumor going on that north korea didn't attack korea south korea because of its middle schoolers and i think it's just because like middle schoolers are going through that time you know they're all like hormonal like you don't understand me mom it's not phase mom <laughs> type of deal um but i think i think i was definitely more like terrified because um i moved to a different country i don't speak the language i don't know anyone here like anyone would be nervous and anxious and especially like oh i went from thinking for some reason i was going to teach in elementary school to a middle school and not just in a middle school but an old boys middle school so it was like a bit daunting at first i think it was daunting at times because like especially the third years were taller than me and i was like <laughs> terrified 
But I think after you get to know them, I feel like I like that I worked at an all-boys middle school rather than an all-girls middle school because, like, I feel boys are chiller. <laughs> like, my friend used to work at a middle school and she was like, yeah, the girls were so Kathy. They were like, <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, it was fun. Oh, I think it was fun. Oh, hmm? uh, I cried. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm, so, would you ever teach English in a foreign country? And if so, what country would you go to? Um, would you go to Korea? Would you go to China, Japan, Vietnam, Philippine, Filipina, Filipina, uh, the Philippines? Um, what do you do? It? <laughs> what do you leave it all behind and start a new life in another country? Leave it down below in the comments. So you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, e underscore comments, please. Um. Definitely if you scroll down, you can see more of my pictures of when I was in Korea and like Gyeongju because I like to show up places. Um, yeah. So comment, like, subscribe, subscribe to my channel for more random shit because that's what I'm here for folks and yeah. Bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.